At the end of my previous scam baiting video, I ghosted the scammer, causing them to send me a series of increasingly angry messages, but eventually falling silent. That wasn't the end of the story for this scammer, however, so let's go scam baiting again. Sometimes people, you know, just drift apart. But the smallest effort, the tiniest little word, can bring people back together again. Which is lovely, but in this case it wasn't even a word. It was an even smaller thing, just a single question mark, which I sent a little over a week after the scammer's last message. The reply was, Dear brother, have you complete our deal? What is the update? Why are you keeping silence on me since days now? What is wrong with you? I said, I was just going to ask if you can accept payment of the fees via bitcoins. The scammer replied, please write this to the bank email, ask them if they will accept the payment via Bitcoin. Because although it had already long since become completely transparent that the two different email addresses, the scammer, Richard Paolo Santiago, and the supposed Banco de Oro Philippines, were actually being operated by one scammer, they were maintaining this pretense, and I was happy to play along with that, because amongst other reasons, it means additional opportunities for mayhem. So the scammer had told me to ask the bank about Bitcoin, but I did nothing at all. The scammer asked, please let me know the response of the bank if you receive any from them. And, dear brother, what is the update? Have you get in touch with the bank? I replied, there's been no response from the bank regarding the bits of coin. Which is a true statement, after all. There was no response because I had sent nothing. The scammer asked, are you sure you sent the message to bank email address? Maybe you made a mistake because they should reply you immediately. Anyway, here is the bank's email address. You have to resend the message. I said, very sure, thank you. I remember hearing the do. The scammer sent me the bank email address and I said, OK. They said, let me know once you receive any response from them, OK? And asked, dear brother, have you sent another message to the bank? I confirmed, no, just the one. The scammer argued, dear brother, you really have to resend the message to the bank again, OK? And we have to wait for their response, OK? Let me know once you resend it. And copy the bank email address I sent you and ask them if they will accept the payment via Bitcoin. But I argued back, I did already do that. I am certain I click do and not do not do. I think it would be best to be patient and wait for their response in due course. They agreed, all right dear brother, let's be patient and wait for the bank's response. I said, okay. And then, rather mysteriously, since I had not sent any email to the fake bank, they wrote to me saying, good day dear beneficiary, we got your previous email demanding for the bank's bitcoin wallet address for your payment of activation fee, below is our bitcoin address, do well to make your deposit and send us the proof of your deposit which is the payment slip, we are looking forward to hear from you soon, thank you. And they also sent me a QR code for the bitcoin wallet, now in case you're wondering, I did look this address up on the blockchain but it doesn't appear to have any transaction history. I guess maybe the scammer set this one up afresh, just for me. I replied, I was wondering if you can explain what is Bitcoin, as I have only heard of it as words. How does the Bitcoin? Also, how does a wallet have an address? They said a Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, popularly known to the world. We thought you already know what Bitcoin is before demanding to pay from it. I argued I did not demand anything. Who told you that? They said, we got your previous mail? Oh yes, the email I never wrote. I replied, OK. I didn't demand anything. They answered, what do you mean? Dear beneficiary, we got a mail in our system with your name demanding for a Bitcoin address for payment. It that not you? Now, this is why you shouldn't tell lies. I mean, I know I lied about sending the email in the first place, but look at the trouble we're now in. I said, I don't know what is a Bitcoin or Bitcoin address. How does a coin go into bits? And how do the bits go back into coin? How does the wallet and the address fit into all of this? And then back to the scammer's other email. The bankers responded, but they seemed very confused and answered questions I did not ask. They inquired, what did you ask for and what did the bank say? I said, they said I demanded. I did nothing of the sort. They answered, what is really the problem now? When are you making the payment? I countered, why are you asking that? I wanted to know about bits coins. They said, and what does that mean? Why won't I ask about that? Because that is the only thing important right now. Making the payment and getting out deal release. If you want to know about Bitcoin, then go and Google it, study and stop playing yourself, OK? I said, OK. They asked, when are you making the payment? But I complained, I don't know how to bit the coins. Is it like bit as the past tense of bite the coins? They suggested, take your cash money and go to any Bitcoin vendor around you and give them the cash and ask them to credit the money to the Bitcoin address the bank sent to you. That's all. I said, OK. I don't know what that means. And none of this addresses the questions I have been asking. I will ask the bank. 
So I asked the bank, please can you clarify how the coins go into bits? They answered, please, if you can't make use of the Bitcoin address to make payment, kindly make use of the Western Union account details given to you. Thank you. I complained, why can't you just answer any of my questions? It would be helpful if you would. And speaking of helpful, I suggested, what about payment via coin squirt? But the scammer just said, my friend, do you have money, the bank? Tell me yes or no and stop wasting my time. I asked, how do you mean? They answered, what I meant is, do you have some cool money to deposit to the bank for them to activate your account and transfer the money? Now, it's almost like every time they answer me, I think of a new question. It's almost like I'm doing that completely deliberately. I asked, what is cool money? I don't understand how that works. I might need to ask my bank about what type of money I have. The next day I was back with a useful update. I've just been to my bank and they didn't know anything about cool money, so I don't know what that is. My bank confirmed that my savings are lodged in beige network bonds. Apparently this has specific financial advantages for transfer of funds to other banks. There is some profit in the transfer. Now, you may have heard of the grey market or the pink panther or the yellow submarine, but I expect if you don't have any experience in the banking world, you may not have heard of the beige network. The Beige Network is actually a financial protocol that's used by all major banks for uncomplicated transfer of funds across international borders. Unlike conventional transfers, which may levy a fee and thus shrink the fund being transferred, the Beige Network supports something called an expanding transfer, which can be thought of as sort of like the exact opposite of a fee. So when you transfer money, it also creates a profit. So that's what the Beige Network is, or at least that's what it might be if I hadn't just made that all up in my head. So I can ask my bank to perform an expanding transfer to BDO Unibank for the fee. I've copied them in on this email. All I need is apparently the beige channel ID for the bank, and I can get this done today. They tried to argue, the beneficiary, you can only use the Western Union account we give to you, or a Bitcoin address to make a transaction for your fee. Dear beneficiary, do you need an account from BDO Bank to make the transfer? But I said, well, that's strange since I specifically asked my bank if BDO can receive a beige channel squirt, and they confirmed that your bank is a network affiliate, so I suggest you check this with your line management and request some training on this area. They said, the beneficiary, we don't accept any other means of payment apart from Western Union, Bitcoin address, and mobile transfer with our bank account. Thank you. Dear beneficiary, ask your bank to make the transaction through the Western Union account. We'll give to you or we will send you our bank account details for the transfer. And from the sidelines, from the other mailbox, Dear brother, tell the bank to send you a BDO account details for you to make the transaction if possible. Want to make the deposit now? I asked, why are you arguing about this like some sort of small boy? They sent me the details of a personal bank account for someone in Minnesota, most likely a money mule, but I carried on. OK, I just need the beige channel ID for this bank and I can make the transfer squirt. They said, are you talking about PaySend ID for you to make the payment? Should we send you a PaySend account details for you to make the deposit? I stood my ground. No, beige network ID. So I can tell my bank to squirt a beige expanding transfer. This is the only acceptable means of payment for me, partly because the expanding transfer will save me money, but primarily because my savings are in beige network bonds, so it's the only way to transfer from that. They tried to argue. The beneficiary, you have to go on, withdraw your money from your bank, or use your ATM card to make the deposit elsewhere to the account. We sent to you, I sent to you, thank you. I replied, can't do that, for reasons already explained. You have to provide the beige channel ID. Why can you not do this one simple thing? Are you a child? They continued, dear beneficiary, if you can't make the payment with those accounts details given to, then you have to find someone to help you out, thank you. But why make things so complicated? I asked the simple question, what is the reason you are unwilling to having, doing, do, being, receiving and expanding transfer in the beige channel? Explain, please. They said, we currently do not make use of this app to receive fund. You can also use PayPal or our Alipay to make your deposit as your if there are any other means to transfer the money, thanks you. I said, what app? It's not an app. The Beige Network is an international banking protocol. Are you new at this job? OK, if not that, what about fund thrust? The scammer wrote, what do you mean by that? Dear beneficiary, we have provided you with the means of making payments for your fee, but you absolutely don't want to make things easier for yourself. If you want a Western Union bank's details, we will forward it to you for the payment. We have also provided a personal bank account, which will contain any amount of money from any country. And we can also give you a PayPal account, Alipay account, or even a Bitcoin address. If you wish to use any of these to make the payment, or else find someone else to help you make the transaction with the following account details. Thanks. Well, that's rude and a little aggressive. I like to respond to aggression not with compliance, but with righteous indignation. 
I'm sorry to say that since your bank appears to be incapable of even the simplest of modern banking procedures, it seems unlikely we will be able to resolve this matter. I think my best course of action from here on will be to renew contact with Mr Clay Jayton and pursue recovery of that fund instead. I mean, Jayton Clay. Nothing much happened for a day or so, so I decided to share a purposely vague photo of some information about the beige network. They replied, Take a picture of the note properly for us to study and provide what you need. Please state exactly what you need to make this transaction. Thank you. Please take a picture of the paper you got from the bank about the beige network front and back fully and send it to us immediately. Then you. I said, that's all I have, but they said all banks use this and everyone in the banking world knows of it. So are you going to send the ID? My bank is open tomorrow morning and so I can make the expanding transfer tomorrow if you can do this. Otherwise it's going to be sometime next week. At last they agreed. Hold on. We will provide a Biage network for your payment. OK, I replied. Will that be this morning? Because... But just because. It's fun to imagine what must have happened next at their end. Did the scammer visit a bank and ask for a beige network? Or did they just waste some time fruitlessly trying to research it online? While I was waiting, I reported the Money Mule account to Wells Fargo Bank and I got an automated reply. We'll look at what happened next in a moment. But first a quick revisit to a previous frequently asked question. In a previous episode, I asked people not to contact me for personal assistance in tracking down and recovering money from scammers after you've been scammed, because sadly there really isn't anything I can do to help. That FAQ is linked in the description of this video, but the point I made there was that your bank or the police or other authorities might be able to help, but it's not a good idea to hang your hopes on the notion that some internet amateur like myself can take any kind of meaningful action against a scammer that took your money before breaking contact and disappearing. Interestingly, in the comments on that video, quite a few people decided to um actually me on that, asserting that Jim Browning can do it. Except, here's the thing. Much as I truly respect Jim Browning and recognise that his technical and practical scam fighting skills are significantly beyond my own, I'm pretty certain that if we asked him, he would say the same as me. That is, please don't email me asking for help if you've been scammed, because I cannot help. Now, you might be thinking it's a bit rude of me to assume what Jim would say. Not really. If you visit the About page of Jim's channel, you'll see the words, please do not email me asking for help with hacking and issues, I cannot help. I require scammers to connect to my PC before I have any chance of identifying them. Because there's a world of difference between intercepting and foiling an active scam in process, which is Jim's bread and butter, as opposed to attempting to track and recover funds from a scammer who's nothing more than a faint trail of dust. I'm not saying it's absolutely impossible. Agencies with three-letter names and lots of resources can probably do it, if the end goal is something they desire to achieve. The sad reality is this, the police, or your bank, or your credit card company, or PayPal, etc. may be able to help you if you've been scammed, under certain circumstances, and particularly if you act fast. Anyone else is either going to be unlikely to be able to help, or in the case of people you might see recommended in the comments or on social media, is just going to scam you by claiming they can help and charging you a fee, then disappearing with your money. This is precisely why I always place such heavy emphasis on avoidance and prevention in all of my scam-related work, because with scams, as with many bad things in life, there really often isn't an undo button. Now, I did also run this past Jim, because I thought it might be impolite to talk about what someone else specifically cannot do, and Jim was kind enough to write back, saying, You're absolutely right. I specifically say that I cannot help people who've already been scammed, but that doesn't prevent me getting hundreds of emails asking for help. I can understand. People become desperate and just assume that I can hack anything and help in their specific circumstance. It's almost the opposite. I have a small window of opportunity to get back at people who target me specifically, and even then it's not guaranteed that I can get back at scammers. This is, of course, very difficult to work out from my videos. 90% of my time is failing to socially engineer scammers into doing my bidding. I'm sure that sounds familiar. But for me, that doesn't make an interesting video, so what you see is the condensed 10% of my time actually manipulating scammers. And he's quite right. What you see in a scam-baiting video of mine, and apparently also his, is just the tip of the iceberg. You mostly see the successes, not the 90% of work that ends in failure or goes nowhere. Anyway, let's get back to the scam-baiting. I had been demanding the necessary details for a beige network transfer, which is a thing that doesn't actually exist, and the fake bank had promised they would provide the details. The next day, the fake bank wrote, Dear beneficiary, we're sorry to tell you that we're unable to find a beige network for your payment. Why can't you make use of direct bank account or any other network to make the payment? I replied, 
Well, I didn't wish to be indiscreet, so I'd not mentioned the problem with the bank account you provided, but since you ask, I'll tell you. When I tried to make the direct transfer to the bank account details you previously provided, the account came up on the screen that it had been flagged for investigation by Wells Fargo on the grounds of internet fraud and money laundering. I was unable to complete the transfer. Do you know anything about this? The scammer just made up an excuse. Dear beneficiary, we're sorry to tell you that the account was under review when you tried to make the deposit, but now it's been cleared, you should go ahead and make the direct deposit to the bank account. If you have any inconveniences making the transaction into the account, write to us to change the account details for your payment as soon as possible, thanks. I replied, OK, just provide the beige channel sub ID for the account and I will get that done tomorrow morning, or perhaps next week. The fake bank argued, we are sorry, we can't provide the BH channel for now. That's because we act accordingly to rules skirting our bank system. You have to make the deposit to the Wells Fargo bank account we provided, or if you're not comfortable with it, we can provide another bank of your choice for the transaction. I argued back, OK, well, that makes no sense at all, but sure, please provide an alternative account, because the Wells Fargo account is still showing as flagged for fraud when I attempt to transfer from my non-beige account. Still trying to feign innocence, the scammer asked which day were you trying to make the transfer into the Wells Fargo bank account. I must tell you that the account has been cleared. I replied, I tried it again this morning just after you said it was clear. It's not clear. Clearly. So the fake bank sent me the details of another money mule, this time in South Carolina. I said, weird, same problem with that one. Investigation of fraud and money laundering. I think we might just need to do the beige network expanding transfer after all. In fact, I will accept no other option, I think. Again, they tried to argue, there is no investigation on this current account given to you and the previous account details has been cleared. We honestly think that you don't want to make this payment with a direct account and we are unable to provide the beige network. And we can't provide the beige network right now, so we suggest you go to the bank and make the payment directly the one if the account. Again, I argued back, you think I'm not trying hard enough? Wow! You've given me two accounts that are locked for fraud and deviancy and you've also apparently never heard of the beige network. It's less like I'm dealing with a large major international bank and more like I'm communicating with a small boy. Then I wrote to the other email address, which is the same scammer. They know that, I know that, but they think I do not know that. There has been nothing but meaningless delay and argument from the bank. Frankly, with this degree of incompetence, I'm hardly surprised that there were millions of dollars lying invisibly in some forgotten account. The scammer said, Dear brother, what is the update? Have you finalised with the bank? My favourite part about maintaining the illusion of separation between these two mailbox contacts that are obviously the same scammer at the other end is that I can insult one of them to the other. I said, no, they're completely useless. They asked, what is the difficulties and argument you are having with the bank right now? I'm even surprised that this hasn't been finalised yet. What is the problem? Then the fake bank said, we suggest you should tell us the particular bank you're banking for us to provide the same account in your bank for the payment, thank you. Well, there's obviously no way I would divulge my real bank account details to a scammer on purpose, so instead I replied, how will that help? Why are you using Wells Fargo accounts anyway if you're BDO? They explained, giving you a BDO bank to make the deposit will be very difficult for you. That's why we provide you the easiest way for you to pay your fee through Wells Fargo Bank since we work together. Providing an account from your bank to make the deposit will be very helpful and easy for you. So tell us the name of your bank and we will provide an account for deposit as soon as possible, thank you. Now, I love this because there's a brand new detail I can ask about. Why will it be difficult? They said, we honestly think this is going to be very difficult to do a wire transfer to BDO Bank account from your country. And if you want a BDO Bank for the payment of your fee, we will kindly provide it for you with immediate effect. I argued, why don't we try? Give me a BDO account. And sure enough, they gave me the details of another Money Mule account, this time a BDO account as requested. Which reminded me I hadn't actually reported the second Wells Fargo account for fraud investigation, so I did that, and also reported the BDO account to that bank's fraud investigation department. Now, I don't know if these reports ever achieve very much, and of course the bank is very unlikely to share the outcome with me either way, but it seems like the right thing to do. Anyway, I replied to the fake bank, at last, I don't know why you insisted on making that so difficult. Please remind me of the fee amount. Was it $375 or $735? It turns out the activation fee amount is $2,450. Thanks, you. We await the proof of your payment and your account details. Thanks. I asked, are you certain? I thought it was less than that. They confirmed that is the actual amount for your fee. You can go back to our conversation. Thanks. I said, OK. They asked, are you paying for your fee now? We look forward to receiving proof of payment and your account details from you. I said, it's a lot more money than the Johnson was talking about. Where will I get that much money? 
They answered, we wish to remind you that this is the actual amount to activate your account and to be able to transfer the money into your own account. And if you don't have the money right now, then you have to run around and pay half of your bill. After the deposit into your account, you complete the payment. Thanks. And that is correct. There was a supposed paperwork fee that the scammer was asking for from one account. Then there was this larger amount that the supposed bank needed, which was the amount it apparently takes to activate the dormant account of the deceased person whose unclaimed estate we are supposedly plundering. It's a payment that will activate the account, so that's something to remember. I said I don't even have half that amount. Regardless, the scam bank pressed on. Let us know your next step right now, and if you can make the full payment, that's better for you, because it will enable us to make the transaction into your account faster, thank you. I said, I cannot make the full payment. Graciously, the fake bank said, that's the only way we can help you out right now. Try as much as possible to provide half the money, thanks. But this is confusing. If the sum of $2,450 is what's necessary to activate the account, what would be achieved by half of that sum? But anyway, I said, I don't have half the money. The Johnson said it would only be $70. They argued, we have honestly offered you a lot of help in this transaction, allowing you to make half the payment for this transaction. We don't know how much more we can offer you help right now. How much do you have now to activate your account and to complete this payment once the money is being transferred into your own account? I argued back, but I don't have half that sum, and no amount of trying will make the money appear from thin air. You work in a bank. You should know this. And the Johnson said $70. The scammer then suggested, if this money is very important to you, then you have to find a way to complete half of the payment to activate your account. You can as well lend money from money lenders, or even mortgage any of your property to achieve your goals. So, that's right, they are suggesting that I take out a loan in order to pay them. Now, I sometimes get people saying they're safe from scams because they have no money, but I think it's important to realise that they will still scam you and drive you into debt if they can. I suggested, why doesn't the Johnson do those things? They stood firm. We can only allow you to make half of the payment to activate your account as soon as possible, and we are sorry to tell you we can't accept anything less than that. I tried asking, besides, if I only pay half, how will that activate the whole of the account? I have about a quarter of the amount. Which I thought would get them, but no, we will only transfer half of the said amount to your account and wait for your full payment. I'm sorry we can't accept anything less than half of the payment, thanks. I asked, how will you transfer half the money if the account is not activated? And the reply was, too many questions, dear beneficiary. I work in the bank system and I know how to do my job. All you need to do is pay your money and be rest assured that your money will be transferred to your account immediately. Thank you. Too many questions? I think not. Get a load of this. But how? Why does it only take half the money to unlock the account? What is the other half required for? When will you give me a straight answer to my questions? Which person was telling me the truth, you or the Johnson? Who am I dealing with? A small boy? But they just answered, we have more customers to attend to on this online banking platform. So if you make the payment, let us know with your proof. Thanks. Yes, yes. Busy trying to scam other people who aren't asking questions. OK. No answers again, as usual, I said. They stuck to their guns. We cannot accept any amount less than half of your payment to enable us to transfer your phone to your account immediately. Thank you once again. What phone? I asked. We're talking about fund, not phone. I don't know if you're playing with the bank system or what, please. If you don't make the transfer to the account details BDO Bank sent to you, don't contact us anymore, thank you. Don't contact you anymore? Well, that's not going to happen. I showed them a screenshot of their own typo and asked, so it's no use if I transfer a quarter of the money? They clarified, we apologise for the mistake. That was a fund we are talking about, not a phone, please. I said, thank you. It was very rude, but I accept your apology. Please clarify if I should send the amount that is one quarter of the amount. But they were determined. We can only accept half the payment and not a quarter. Please, we are following the instructions and rules of the bank. We advise that you should look for money to complete this payment and have your fund transferred to your account immediately. I asked, so should I continue communicating with you or cease? They said, you can send in your my once you have made the payment or once you have complete the money to make the payment. Don't hesitate to send in your my. We will respond to you immediately once we see any improvement on your payment. I said, OK. I only have about a quarter of the required amount. They said, the beneficiary, we advise you should find a way to complete half the payment to enable a successful transaction. We can only accept half of the payment, thanks. Then I got an escalation notice from the real BDO bank about the reported account, which was nice. I'm still sure they won't tell me the final outcome, but at least it seems to indicate something might happen. Then I had an idea. If I do a beige network expanding transfer and set the expansion to 200% or more, 
This should mean that my money turns into the correct amount during the transfer process. Is this acceptable? They replied, Dear beneficiary, we are sorry to say that you are very stupid. Thank you. No need to thank me. It's really no trouble at all. You have been given three different accounts to make your deposit and you keep saying that has nothing to do with the account given to you. We will only respond to your email when you have made the payment with any of these accounts details send to you thanks. Can you send in your proof which says the account we gave to you is under investigation of fraud? Well, that's rude and aggressive, so here comes some righteous indignation. I would think it would be better for you to discuss this directly with your own colleagues at BDO. Since the investigation is taking place within your own security department, why would you need my help with that, like you're some feeble child? Weird. This is you're just making fun of yourself if you're unable to pay this money today, either with those accounts given to you or Bitcoin ATM fee. Don't contact us any more, thanks. Well, I beg to differ, and I'm going to keep on contacting you. I told you I can pay. This got their attention, and they said, We will give you only some hours to make the payment and send your account details with the proof of your payment. How many hours? I asked. They answered, You have not less than eight hours to make this deposit, or else you won't hear from us any more, thanks. Or you have to visit the bank here in Philippine, thanks. Not less than eight hours, eh? Well, that's unusual, but OK, I will pay in nine hours or more. Significantly less than eight hours afterwards, I said, Hi. Dear beneficiary, have you mad the payment? They asked. No, I answered. You said I must wait at least eight hours. It's a long time to wait. They argued I said you should make your payment before eight hours and send us the proof of your payment, otherwise you won't get a response from the bank system anymore. I argued back. No, you definitely said not less than eight hours, which means more than eight hours. I'm not here to argue which one of us is right and which one is wrong, because you're the one that's wrong. They said, it is all right, you have to go and make your payment now, thanks. But I pointed out, it's not eight hours yet. They replied, we're not here to argue, go and make your payment now, everything is done perfectly, no excuse anymore, do well to send us the proof of your payment, thank you kindly. Make use of the BDO bank details sent to you, or make use of the first West Fargo bank sent to you. The scammer wrote from the other mailbox, dear brother, how are you? I haven't gotten any messages from you about our deal, have you finalised with the bank? I said, the bank told me to wait at least eight hours, and now they're denying it like children. The scammer said, please kindly follow the bank's instruction and get our deal done, OK? I confirmed, I am doing that. They said to wait at least eight hours. I don't know why, but that was the instruction. The scammer said, OK, dear brother, do whatever thing they said to you, OK? We just need to get our deal done, that's all. Yes, 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 something, something urgent. OK, I will wait eight hours. Do you think that means eight hours from now or from some other time? The scammer replied, I don't know when the time was given to you. That's when you will start to calculate it. OK, dear brother, make sure you make the deposit after eight hours and send them your account details to transfer the money into your account. I confirmed, at least eight hours. It may be more hours than eight, but it cannot be less. Also, I only have about a quarter of the amount of money they asked for. Do you think this will be a problem? The scammer replied, OK, dear brother, I will be waiting to hear a good news from you. OK, yes. Please wait for that. And good luck. The next day I said, hi. The scammer replied, hello, dear brother. What is the update? Have the money been transferred to your account? I asked, has the eight hours elapsed where you are? It's been more than eight hours here, but I've never been to the Philippines, so unsure if hours are the same size there. Then I asked the fake bank, please confirm how many hours have elapsed for you at this point. They said, this is about 24 hours since we gave you eight hours to make your payment and we haven't received you payment. I said, OK, thank you for the confirmation regarding the passage of time. They demanded, we need your account details right now and we are with your proof of payment if you've made the deposit to the account given to you. But first of all, send in your account details where your fund will be transferred to you. I said, OK, my account is this string. They replied, please, was asked for your bank account details and not this. I clarified, that's what I gave you. This is the beige channel ID and subclode for my account. They responded, we are asking for your bank account details and not your beige channel ID. I replied, that's irrelevant. The next day I said, hi, please confirm how many hours have now elapsed. I want to get a secure understanding of this before I proceed with the quarter payment. The supposed official from BDO Bank Philippines replied, go ahead and make the payment to the first Wells Fargo account given to you, and do well to send your proof of payment with your account details, and please, if you haven't made the payment, never send any f***ing message to this email. Thank you. I ignored this rudeness and carried on. You were not clear as to how many hours have now elapsed at your end. I'm just trying to get a feel for the passage of time. 
And this was where I thought I'd finally worn this scammer down. I sent a whole load of short messages complaining the bank had stopped replying. Eventually the scammer replied, what type of stupid question are you asking? Have you made the deposit to the bank? And the bank also replied, kindly send us a payment slip and your account details if you have made the payment. And if you haven't, go and make the payment now or else the bank system will block you from sending ungrateful messages here. Thank you. So is anyone else a little bit sickened that not only is this scammer trying to scam me and being pretty rude as well, although I suppose I asked for that, but is also demanding gratitude? I was, so I replied, I'm confused. Why are you demanding gratitude? And at this point, the scammer broke contact for a while. I continued badgering them about the beige thing for days afterwards, and I thought maybe we'd run this to ground with a bit of a damp squib ending, which I think would be a bit disappointing for you, the audience. So I thought we'd try one more time to light the fireworks. I said, OK, I figured it out. I did an expanding transfer to myself, which means I now have funds for half the amount. The scammer was interested and replied, Go ahead and make the payment, the account details given to you by the bank, and do not write to me if you haven't made the payment. But I pleaded, the bank has not instructed me yet. The scammer said, the bank is already waiting for your positive reply, so go ahead and make the payment, thank you. You can as well write to the bank, ask them if you can proceed with the payment right now. But as I pointed out, they've not provided the beige nozzle. This seemed to have the desired effect. The scammer replied, Please do not write to my mail anymore if you can't make the payment to the account given to you by the bank. If you can't make the payment using the account information given to you, then you can go to hell. Don't bother my life anymore. Let this be the first and last time you will ever write anything concerning that stupid beige of yours to my mail. Otherwise, I will have you block, foolish. I asked, How will you do that? Also, should I pay the bank or not? They answered in shouty caps, I will do that immediately if you continue this your stupidity of not making this payment and requisition for that rubbish beige network of yours. Trust me. Trust you? Why would I trust you? Okay, but should I still pay the bank? The scammer said, you can go ahead and make the payment if you wish to have the fund, and if you're not ready, then go to hell. Okay, I said, I'll see if they can give me the beige valve. Then to the fake bank, the Johnson has instructed me to pay you. Please provide the beige aperture. The scammer replied in shouty caps, that is the last message you will get from me since you don't want to abide to my rules, idiot. And just for once, I think the scammer might have actually been telling the truth. This was the last message I got. I did ask, what happens if I need further advice? And I sent a few other emails, but I think we might have actually burned this one out now. Unless I can think of something else, perhaps. But for now, I hope this was a bit of fun. Thanks for watching, stay safe from scams, and I hope to see you again soon. Make the